So I'm sure a lot of these things you do on the loading of the kiln and the operations, and, and some of these things might be new ideas to you, and this is where you gotta keep a real open mind. Just consider some of these things and, they, and how they might solve problems for you uh, as you as you move into uh, this next part on loading the kiln, because some of it's a little counterintuitive. Um, probably one of the most important things is making sure that the kiln shelves are the right size for the kiln. And because you're all color me mind folks, I'm sure they've got the right shelves for you. But I, I always mention that the the kiln shelves need to be at least two inches smaller in diameter than the inside diameter of the kiln. This kiln, which is a pretty standard one for you all, is a 28 inch diameter. So a 26 inch shelf is the largest shelf you should use in there. If you go too close to the side walls, we don't get enough air circulation and it causes problems. Uh, so that's the diameter. We always want to have uh, the bottom shelf propped up one inch off the floor. Gives us, a, especially in this larger diameter kiln, the very bottom of the kiln can run a little bit cool. By propping up one inch, we do two things. We get out of that super cool zone and we give the place for the EnviroVent to extract fumes uh, from the kiln. So it's very important that you use uh, one inch posts down at the bottom. Okay, and then uh, same goes true on the side walls. Just uh, if you will allow one inch at a minimum, uh, maybe a little bit more, but don't get anything closer than an inch to the side walls. So you've got a, kind of an inch all the way around is the, as tight as you could possibly load it. Uh, if you can give it a little bit more, I'm even happier, but don't go within, don't go inside that, that one inch uh, zone around, uh, around the kiln. And then the last thing is really important. Um, again, I'm going to be, you're going to get so tired of hearing me say the word thermocouple, but we've got that temperature sensor, that thermocouple in there. And if you will imagine a hemisphere like the size of a, a half of a grapefruit, okay, don't actually use a half a grapefruit, that would be bad, but a half a grapefruit in size. And if you were to just place that over the, the end of the thermocouple, don't let anything get inside that imaginary half a hemisphere, okay? A half a hemisphere, that was redundant. In, inside that, that hemisphere. So don't let a shelf get any closer than that. Don't let a pot get any closer than that. Don't put another shelf on top any closer than that. Don't let a post get inside there, okay? And the reason being is that thermocouple's pretty sensitive. What would happen? Here's a little mental exercise back from the break. What would happen if we had a thermocouple in here and we put a shelf right up against it? Is that thermocouple gonna run at the correct temperature or is it gonna be influenced by that shelf? The shelf's gonna influence that temperature. Now, is the shelf gonna make it run hotter or colder? What do you think? It's gonna, uh, hotter I think is the right answer, but it, it's, the shelf is so cold, it's gonna cool off the thermocouple and then the thermocouple will report to the controller, I need more heat. And so the net effect is a hotter firing. Okay, so you're right on. Uh, so we don't wanna have anything come within a couple inches of that thermocouple. Give me a half a, a half a grapefruit, okay? And everybody's doing that, right? Okay, just checking. <laughs> Except in December, right? Yeah. Okay, now another thing uh, to keep in mind is that the, the probably the uh, most dense thing inside the kiln is far and away the kiln shelf itself. All right? And this is pretty easy. If we were to grab any of these pieces out of that beautiful display case and weigh them relative to a half a kiln shelf, there's no contest, right? The shelf is clearly heavier, maybe an order of magnitude, 10 times heavier than any one piece. So it, it makes sense that uh, that is the majority of the mass inside the kiln and where you distribute that mass and how uniformly you distribute that mass throughout the, the kiln will determine where hot and cold spots are. When we build these things, we design them so that they fire uniformly with a uniform load. That's all we can do. Okay, so we put in four inch posts and we put in one inch shelves and we stack them up like that and we put cones all over it and we get it pretty darn close. Now, how many people load their kiln like that? Nobody, right? I mean, maybe if you had a couple birthday parties and they were all firing the same thing, you might have a real homogenous load like that, but generally speaking, you don't, okay? So, if you had a very cold area of the kiln and you loaded it up with lots of layers of shelves, and then you had a hot area of the kiln where you only had a few layers of shelves, you're making the problem worse. Let me give you a real world example. You've got this whole table, for example, covered with stuff that has to go in the kiln. 
So you start out like any normal person would, and you put stilts down, you start loading, and you pack stuff in nice and close, and you get this whole bottom layer going, and then you measure it, and you get your post set, and you put that next layer of shelves right down. You've got to, okay, now you're going to give me a, maybe a half an inch or an inch, but in the old days, you'd put that shelf right down on top of the next highest thing, and then you'd take the next layer, and you're working through your, your uh, table here, and you're packing, and now you've got three quarters of the stuff packed into the bottom nine inches of the kiln, okay? And you say, hmm, I'm doing an excellent job. You put down one more layer, you put the last little bit there, and we're right up to the 13 inch mark and you go, good, now I'll take one last piece and put it in on that top shelf, perfect. I've got a nice uniform firing, here we go. I'm so proud of myself. I loaded that kiln fabulously, except for one little problem. You think it's gonna fire uniformly? And why not? We've got all the mass down on the bottom and there's no mass in the top. I guarantee you, if you put cones throughout that load, the bottom of the kiln is going to fire cool, cold. Okay? So, this is as you're getting used to this, as you're a new studio, by now you probably, if you've been open for a long time, you know where the hot and cold spots are inside your kilns. And every kiln varies a little bit. I'd love to say, we make thousands of these every year, and I'd love to say they're all identical. We make them the same way, but they're, they're variations from brick to brick that we can't count on. We could get into some really lightweight brick and we'll have a great insulator. We get really dense brick, really heavy brick, and we have a bad insulator. And that can influence where the hot and cold spots are. If you bought two kilns from us at the same time, side by side, they could fire a little bit differently just by variations in the brick. So you've got to use cones, you've got to learn where those hot and cold spots are, and just by loading the kiln differently, you can move the hot and cold spots around, okay? If at all possible, um, stagger the shelves. That will help with temperature uniformity. It's not always possible, but if you can put in half shelves and stagger it like that, then we have a little bit better airflow and we don't have um, consistent uh, boundaries, if you will, across the, the kiln and, and that creates these stratified layers. So if you can stagger them, that helps as well. Okay, here's another one that's a little counterintuitive until you think about how, how the heat is transferred. What's the hottest thing, what's the hottest part of a kiln? Not a trick question. The, coil. the heating element, good answer, okay. So now the goal is we gotta get the heat out of that heating coil into the pot, right? And the way the majority of that heat is transferred is through infrared radiation, okay? It's the same kind of radiation we see from the sun to our faces on a, it can even be a cold winter day. If it's clear and you can see the sun, you can feel the radiation on your cheek, right? 93 million miles and, it's, and you can still feel it. But if you put a piece of cardboard up between you and the sun, that blocks it, right? Now you're in the shade, you can't feel that radiation. It's the same thing's going on in a much smaller scale inside the kiln. We've got this radiant heat coming out of the elements and, and we want line of sight between the coils and the pots. So if you will put the taller things in the center of the shelf and the lower things around the edge, then everything on the shelf will get radiant heat from the coils. If you do the inverse of that and you put a platter down in the middle and then you ring it perfectly with mugs and there's no way that platter is going to get any radiant heat, then it only picks up conductive heat, which is the slowest type of heat transfer. It means it's got to take it, the heat in through the shelf and then it's got to warm up the entire shelf, which we already said was the coldest part of the thing. It's the most dense load. And then eventually it's got to get up through that stilt. And that's not going to happen. I mean, it's just, it's a slow way to transfer heat. So you want to make sure everything gets radiant heat. And by doing that, you put the, the way to do that is put the, the tall stuff in the center and the lower stuff around the edges.